Here now is Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrells with Talk to Tom. Sponsored by Greenway Dodge. Hello everyone, I'm Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrells. Welcome to Talk to Tom. This show started as a fluke about almost a year ago after our general manager decided that Talk to Tom, instead of just being for hurricane season, needed to be on TV once a week. And so we've had a great time doing Talk to Tom every week for you. This week is gonna be a little different though. Rather than take questions from the viewers at home, I have a very special guest <laughs> who has showed up here at the powerful WKMG studios. Please welcome my friend, Pamela Brady. For those of you who do not know Pamela, she was the queen of all media here in Central Florida for how many years? Sure. Girl? I, before I got here, she was me. She had this station in the palm of her hands for 13 years, 14 years. You're how so many? Kind. No, seriously, you, you um, were huge. Let's see, I was 25, I think. Maybe 15, 16, 17 years. You did 17 years as the so. chief right here. Okay, well, here's a true story. Uh, <laughs> I told someone this the other day. When I was coming, uh, Pamela had decided to, she had so many kids, like the little woman so in the shoe. <laughs> she didn't know what to do. And so we had life changes going mm -hmm, on. And you did. were like, I don't want to really do TV late. And they're like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? And I was working for our sister station in Detroit. And so they brought me down to do the 11. They eventually work in. And Pam was like, yeah, I don't want to do the 11. Eventually, I don't want to do the 6. And that's how I took over, was I was brought in to do that. But people warned me, oh, she's not going to give up the 11. People who had worked around her before were like, oh, you guys are never going to get along. Oh my and goodness. from the moment I walked in the door, we we're besties. We we're biffles. Yeah. I mean, it was crazy. <laughs> yeah. I was totally expecting it not to work. And it worked like a champ. Yeah, it did. So how are you doing? It worked so good too, because I'll tell you this, you know this story. Like I always knew I've, I've got to lay this down. I love this. I mean, who doesn't love this? KMG mm -hmm. is a phenomenal place to work, for real. But I always thought, wow, my family life is changing. And just how I'm wired, I knew like I, I need to be home more. I still wanted to do a little bit of something. And I was like, wow, I love my job so much. I love this station. I love this community so much. Amen. That my heart was this community. And I was like, wow, I, I couldn't think of who I would want to hand it to. And then you walked in the door. And I was like, I don't even know if you remember that. Yes, but I, we had I was a conversation like, about it. Yes, th it is you, and I have the freedom, and bye. <laughs> so, yeah, I remember you said, such I a prayed blessing. that someone like you would show I did up. And pray. I said, Lady, I prayed someone like you would quit. <laughs> <laughs> so good, yeah. It was funny. It was the blessing that God well, sent. Well, so what, how have you been? You're doing well, right? You've great. not been on TV with yeah. me for almost 20 time. years now. Because right. yeah. we started together yeah. in, two, in 2000. We were a team. Yeah. Then gradually you left. So tell me what's going on with you. Let's take a walk down memory lane. You started here what year? Do you remember? Yes. I started here in 89. Wow. Yes. And um, honestly, so just loved you've been it. out of Ohio State like no time at that time. <laughs> a couple years. Yeah. In 89, you yeah. graduated. 85 probably from Ohio State? I did. We're exact. We went to same, graduated same year high school. Don't tell people that. No. Always <laughs> tell people I'm old. No, Pam was younger than me. No. Always. Tiny bit. Tiny okay, bit. so you started here in 89. Mm -hmm. um, what happened? What, what, in 1989, you start, the weather couldn't have been perfect. No. Did you have a hurricane, a wildfire, a big storm, you know a hailstorm? What I had that? is Hugo, Hurricane Hugo. Oh, yeah. And it. it was, do you, you remember that one? I was in South Carolina. Oh, of course. Well, then you, I got you blasted. probably had right, it bigger right. than we did, but just the intensity of that. I was fairly young. I was 25 at the time when I came here. Um, but that was such an amazing hurricane for me to learn from and to learn how it's done and to learn what's important. Because um, you can be all technical in hurricane. I mean, this is what you are incredible at. Like I tune into you like during hurricane coverage because what you see and what you know is what people need to know. You don't hype it up, you don't make it bigger, you don't scare people, but you get to see like, okay, how do I keep these people calm, but keep them safe? You've got that. I learned that through Hugo and I was thankful for that. But it was scary at the time because I was, oh, it was super young. It was September 22nd, 1989. Yeah, and I was super young and I mm. had been here, gosh, maybe nine months. And so it was my baptism now, into as long as we've hurricane. known each other, the 23 years we've known each other, we've never talked about that, that hurricane because I was in South Carolina and this is about you, not me. But on, on that, I look back on that time and every year I commemorate that because it was my first head on collision with the category four hurricane. So that was your first hurricane too? Yes. And, wow. and it, that's how weird is that? Yeah. It's more of our weirdness. I know. And I always tell people, we've got weirdness. Yeah. I had 
no business forecasting that hurricane. Well, in all humility, <laughs> neither did I. I. And you know what's really neat too is for me to even see how God orchestrated people. Like I have a friend who is a brilliant meteorologist, but he was calling me, walking me through. And I was like, wow, even to have his expertise, he was he was a big help. I learned a lot and I was thankful. That's what, he was yeah. a nice man. I've oh, only met him once. Is. Only met him once. Talked to him a couple months ago. Did he, you really? He loves mentoring younger meteorologists. That's and, great. Yeah. Don't you, I mean, you do. You look at the people in your life that um, helped you get where you are. Oh, absolutely. It's been a miracle. Mm -hmm. And more than anything, I hope that when I'm dead and gone, my uh, legacy will be all the interns that came through. Yeah. So I've got them working West Coast, got you them working at the Weather you got Channel. One here. Got it's America. one came yeah, back. I yeah. love that. I've got, I mean, look at I've got them everywhere. So that's, yeah. that's part of um, what I hope to leave. Yeah. You know, and you're part of mm -hmm. that too because you were here too, yeah. all that stuff. All right, let's talk about the craziest weather coverage. There's Hugo, obviously yes. that was your first big one. It was. But there were hailstorms and firestorms mm -hmm. before I got here that I hear about. And Bertha, Hurricane Bertha. Okay, talk. Which is funny because I was like 100 months pregnant with Abby, my first baby. <laughs> when, and you know, you're on the air, what, like 36 hours? And everybody was calling the station, so like, are you gonna name your baby Bertha uh, after this hurricane? <laughs> uh, that's a hard no. But those are exciting times, aren't they? Yeah. That well, kind of forecasting is exciting. And you bond with everyone. You do. And you, you get to know everybody a little bit mm -hmm. better. Yeah. You really, really do. Um, so outside of that, any other things like the wildfires? I, I want to say, was that 98 we had the wildfires? Yes, mm -hmm. What year, do you remember the year that they evacuated all of Flagler County? I think that was 98. I think it was too. I just remember also, um, during that time, that was a little scary, to be honest. And I can remember constantly coming back, you know, they're coming back to you, look at the radar, is there rain? <laughs> You're just looking for days, like, no, actually, no, there's not, it's dry. How is this gonna end? And I think it just was terrific firefighters and, you know, people heeding warnings, but it was, that was a pretty tense time. Very scary time, yeah, it was. very scary time. Mm -hmm. If we had it happen again, we'd yeah. be battling it yet again. It does mm -hmm. happen from time to time. Yeah. All right, in one of our videos that we have, we have you going to North Dakota. Mm, yeah. Tell me, I didn't know anything about that until mm -hmm. we started getting ready to do this. And I saw the dug up shot and said, this is Pamela Brady, right? And went, 100%. Yeah. That's exactly her. She still looks like that. That's her. <laughs> yeah. You do. You oh, look, you stepped funny. at about 1998 or 2000. So tell me what was that about? You went to North Dakota for what? I did. So there was a, they had some major flooding there at the time. And there was... Um, whole areas of the community that were flooded and there was especially an area that was hit really hard was schools and libraries mm -hmm. so I got to orchestrate which was so fun for me I always love community stuff so I got to orchestrate this book drive and we got a couple like books a million at that time involved but really it was community-wide and we had people bring books here and we shipped the books there and we got to put back their library in their elementary school and then their public library wow. as the kids were starting school, which honest, I mean, that just blessed me. Schools right now, we're right outside Century Elementary School, which actually is just one of two schools left that was not completely devastated by the flooding. So we're here today with kids that are just volunteering to help us. They are so excited about the books. A lot of librarians, they can't believe we're getting so many books here. And just, it is incredible. You know, the flooding was so devastating in Grand Forks, North Dakota. In fact, if we take you back to uh, just a couple of months ago, where homes were flooded completely up to their roofs. Now as folks are rebuilding, they have an awful lot of work to do, but not just in the homes, also in their schools, because as I said, so many of the schools were actually closed. In fact, none of these kids have been back to school yet. So folks in Central Florida organized a book drive. The truck came from Central Florida, bought over 16,000 books. And Lacey, who is a little girl who went to Lincoln Elementary School, who lost all of her own books, thinks this is pretty special. Uh, I think it's very, very nice because I, we had a, all these books in our basement, too, because that was our playroom, and we lost that, too. So I got to meet you know, hundreds of kids that went to this elementary school and used this public library. So we've got librarians from the city of Grand Forks, North Dakota, that are helping us sort through the books. And it's really actually pretty hard because as you're reading through these books and sorting them, you flip open the cover and our kids in Central Florida and lots of the adults too, I should say, actually wrote messages in the front of the books. And I wanted to share one with you that's from Kiera from Winter Park. And Kiera's eight years old. And it says, she writes, Dear people of Grand Forks, I hope you find a new home to live in. I hope you get food and find joyness and be happy. I'm so sorry about what happened at Grand Forks. And I think it's messages like this one from Kiera 
that show these kids in Grand Forks that we really do care. It was just a huge blessing. Oh, you didn't have kids of your own yet. I didn't. Yeah, that was early. No, they, uh, yeah, that was a long time ago. Wow. Actually, I might have been pregnant with one because I think I was nauseous, if I remember <laughs> right. I remember being on that, yeah. yeah. But it was, a, yeah, that was just a really sweet time of just trying to meet the needs of other people. All right, listen, we're going to take a quick break. And normally this is when I say, okay, say goodbye to my guests, but not this time. I could talk to Pamela forever, obviously. We'll be right back for the second half. Stay with us. All right, welcome back to the second half of Talk to Tom. I'm so excited. If you missed the first half, you're going to have to go to New 6 Plus and replay the first 10 minutes of this interview because I'm joined today by my friend and former co-worker, Pamela Brady. For those of you who do not know, Pamela was the chief meteorologist here for how many years? 17, did you say? 17. Before I got here. She's my immediate predecessor. We worked together for one, two, maybe three years, mm -hmm. and then she took off to find a life. Um, and things have been going great for you. Tell me about what's going on with you in, in the time since you've been gone. What, what has wow. happened? You had another child if you left me. I did. I had Tana right mm -hmm. about the time we left. Um, she's actually here today. I know. I love that. Which is so fun. I love that. So I have four daughters watching our kids grow where you're like, wow, God did that. I didn't do that. Like, they're incredible. So it's Abby, Lydia, Sarah Grace. <laughs> you remember everything. Oh, yeah, oh yeah, because I have Annalisa, Layla right. Shelby, you, and then they ALS yeah. together. And then you cheated and threw in a fourth I, age. Three, hit, yes. All right. So you're back at the powerful KMG today. I you love it. Around. It's, it's incredible. It's the, the outside looks the same. Yeah. But the inside's a little different. You took a tour. I love let, it. You came in right before I got here and did about 30 minutes looking mm -hmm. around. Tiffany was awesome. Tell me what your reactions are. What do you think? Oh, it's beautiful. It's, so it's funny, on the other side where you can see the lake, mm -hmm. I used to have my garden. I used to have a garden with Tom McCubbin oh, over yeah? here that I did, which was so fun. And um, he's so smart. I'm not gardening, but I learned a lot. <laughs> well, I hope I did. But um, anyway, that the building is phenomenal. It's, and your weather center, I think you've got like quadruple the monitors that I have. It's big and glossy Great with two different technology. weather systems and radar. And yeah, monitors. I love it. It's a lot longer. We for a while we called it like fifty yards of weather because <laughs> yeah. it's like half a football field. And yeah, it looks like sometimes. Do you love the new technology? And I do. I do. And so there you go. We have nothing but new technology. So, do you miss it? Do you kind of wish you were still? Because like I can reach up and touch radar and pull the map down with just That's a button. Cool. I could never do that. Oh, you could. I'll show you how in a minute. <laughs> yeah. And someone like you will pick it up in a hurry. But do, do you miss it at all? There are some things I miss about it. I love, I loved that part of being a part of the community. I'm thankful for the things that I get to do now that have to do with like Get Healthy Florida and mm -hmm. I, you probably know about that. But I, I do love weather. So there are times where I think, wow, I'd love to, if I could run in and do it a day or two, I'd love it. It just doesn't work that way. All right, well, two, two real quick questions. First of all, are you on social media? Because it has taken over our entire lives. It has, yeah. It has shut down so many industries, you know, and sold yeah. things out. Mm -hmm. And we've shifted a lot. Different platforms. I have Jonathan Kegas now, who's full time yeah, on incredible. the web, always on YouTube, always on. <laughs> yeah. We have ClickOrlando.com, which we had when you were here, mm -hmm. but now it's a full, big old channel with like yeah. you know full time employees now. Um, are you on social? Can people find you if they want to get a message to you? But I am on Instagram, so. That's the only are you, social are you media. Pamela Brady. That's I it? am. Okay. I think I'm Pamela Brady. <laughs> You're not the Pamela Brady. I think I'm Pamela Brady six. Oh, well. Which is like the six of us, I think. That's what oh, I Oh, see that? Like, How yeah. convenient because there's six members of the family. Yeah. And Actually, there's six. seven now. Now I have a son in law who's. Oh, amazing. that's true. So now we're number. I have to change it to seven, right? No, oh, don't do that. Okay. The original six. <laughs> the original. Like the original six hockey teams. Yes. Okay, talk to me about um, what you're up to. You kind of alluded to that. I know that when you left television, you, you became. You had to focus on your family. Mm -hmm. You had four, four daughters. It's a lot of work. Yeah. And a husband who works also with you. He's. Not that he's not a hands-on dad, because he is. He is but, very much. But yeah. let's just not lie to ourselves. Yeah. They needed their mom, and so you went to, to just encompass yeah. yourself and marinate them and love yeah. and grow them up, raise them up. But you're not just sitting around. You don't do TV. You're busy in the community. Tell us about what you've been doing. We noticed that a lot of people uh, didn't maybe have the best health care, best health insurance, and so we were like, how can we use the power of TV for good to help? keep people healthy in Central Florida. And we figured we could do that, and I could do that along with my husband, who works mm -hmm. at Advent Health, which we love working together. And so we started doing community events 
with Advent Health doing um, flu shots. To this day, we've given over 250,000 free flu shots and we've done mammogram events and mostly women's health things where we'll pull up with trucks and if you haven't had a mammogram or if there's some part of your health we could help you with. And that's been really, that's been just really, really satisfying to me. Anything you want to say, one last shout out, not that you'll be gone forever, <laughs> But this one last chance to say hello to Central Florida or whatever. You know what? I, my shout out would be that I am so grateful for this television station, for real. Uh, it changed my life. Uh, this station allowed me to do the things that I wanted to do, that I was passionate about in the community. And I don't know. I, I don't know. I hadn't been on another station in a really long time, but I don't know if that's typical. And it's for not. that, I'm very grateful. And I'm so grateful that God brought you so I could leave and go to where I was supposed to go to. So Pamela Brady, awesome. everybody. She's the bomb. She was my predecessor and is my good friend to this day. Thank you for watching Talk to Tom. If you want to submit a question, go to clickorlando.com forward slash talk to Tom. Submit your questions. If you have an idea for a guest that could top this one, let me know. We would love to have them on. See you next week right here on Talk to Tom and on News 6 Plus. And while you're on News 6 Plus, make sure to check out all the other episodes of Talk to Tom, like this one about sea turtles. And it's going to look kind of silly because I'm going to put this little turtle in a burrito wrap. Because <laughs> I want the turtle to sit up for this. Oh. And I'm going to use my hands and use this tube. And I, we're using something called sulprophate. And it looks a lot like Pepto-Bismol for turtles and other animals. But so we're going to go ahead and you're put force feeding in it? the tube. Boom. Oh, it's going in the tube right into it. I'm not forcing it. It's going right <laughs> into the tube. Okay. And this should help Opal to, oh. um, it'll coat Opal's stomach a little bit. Yeah. But I want Opal to be all the way up. I push just a little bit of air through there to let it go through. And now we're going to let Opal kind of sit up and let the gravity do wow. some work. This one about how natural burials are saving the planet. The impact that conventional um, settings have uh, can is quite detrimental and can vary in scope. So it can have an immediate effect on the community there, but also in a broader scale, you know, it can definitely have an effect with say deforestation uh, of having certain materials be harvested to create such elaborate caskets. Uh, the use of embalming fluids, uh, things that are carcinogenic materials that Funeral home workers might deal with, uh, cemetery workers might come across, uh, and that might eventually seep into the ground, uh, just poisoning the, the earth. Um, same with concrete and metal, uh, you know, other forms of materials that don't mm -hmm. really need to be in the ground. So there's definitely a way where, um, for ourselves, we're trying to limit the impact on the environment. And so we're trying to educate people about all their disposition choices, regardless if they work with us or not. Uh, part of our mission is just to educate people on conventional burial, conservation burial. Now there's a lot of other green options, aquamation, um, uh, composting. So it's nice to see uh, the green burial movement uh, continue to grow. And check out this one about how sharks can predict hurricanes. They basically detect the fall in barometric pressure that is transmitted down through the water column and they get out of shallow areas knowing that a storm is about to turn their habitat upside down. So it's a fascinating wow. thing. It's a it's it's how they survive these smaller sharks. The bigger ones, not so important. They they go deep, uh, but they can ride things out close to shore. But the little ones that are in shallow areas, they know when a storm is coming and they get out of harm's way. In this episode about how our very own Candace Campos lost her home to a hurricane when she was just a child. When I finally fell asleep, I found out interviewing them for a story I did on ClickOrlando.com. They actually said goodbye to each other. They um, prayed that I would fall asleep and if God forbid something happened, I wouldn't feel it. And I didn't realize that they officially said their goodbyes and, you know, it makes me sad to know that they did that. But thankfully everybody was okay and our safe room saved our lives because you opened up that door, it looked, there was no more home. It was gone. Uh, it, furniture was wrapped around siding from neighborhood, from a house blocks away uh, we had a boat in our front yard i mean we had no roof we had no toys we everything that i owned everything my parents owned was was gone unless it was in that small half bath man that story kills me the part of them sitting yeah. there backs against the wall to hold it up back against the door to yeah. keep it in baby candace trying to go to sleep and saying goodbye yeah. that's it makes Crazy. me want to cry i can only imagine yeah.
what it does to you. It makes yeah, it no, really, it, I can it, feel it welling up in me right now. That's such an yeah. emotional picture for me. That, you know, having kids, you have kids now. You can just, yeah. I, I really can't imagine what that must have been. No, I mean, and that's why I still, I mean, my parents are the ones who watch my kids when I'm here during hurricane season because my husband's a firefighter. So he's also working during hurricane. So if there's two people that I know uh, know how to <laughs> make a safe room and, and, and survive a hurricane, it's my parents. Watch every episode of Talk to Tom for free on the new 6 Plus app. Just download it on your smart TV to get started.